and sad times news. Submitted by Big Time Baller. The country is in mourning after a gunman sprays bullets into a packed music festival in Las Vegas. So here are the details. The shooter has been identified as Steven Paddock, 64 years old. He was found dead from a self-inflicted gunshot. He was on the 32nd floor of the Mandalay Bay shooting into an open air music festival called Route 91 Harvest Country Music Festival around 10 p.m. last night. So he is responsible for the death of at least 58 people and about 515 people are also injured during the shooting and the stampede that followed. How many bullets did he have? That's crazy. 500 people were affected? Mm -hmm. They That's said that they found 10 guns. Yeah, so this is now the largest mass shooting in U.S. history that lasted about 15 minutes. The previous one was the Pulse nightclub massacre in Orlando that killed 49. Oh, I remember that one. Yeah, so... Was that the gay club? Yeah. yeah. I remember that one too. Yeah, so it appears as if he acted alone. There is no evidence of terrorism yet, but early reports did say that ISIS claimed responsibility for this, but there's no evidence of that yet. It's domestic terrorism. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the motive is still unclear, but apparently he had made recent gambling transactions of 10,000 to 30,000 a day. He Whoa. Was, he was staying at the Mandalay Bay since Thursday. The shooting happened Sunday night. Is that his normal type of gambling? Or was it like weird behavior? Because some people are balling and 10, 20 Gs a day is like nothing. Mm. Well, it is reported that he does have, he has money and that he is a gambler. So I'm not sure if that was like usually what he would, he would yeah. gamble with, but it is reported that he, he, so he lived nearby in Mesquite and so he would drive to Vegas all the time to go gambling. So that was like a common thing that he would do. That sounds so odd. What? It's like I'm gonna gamble, have a good time, and then I'm gonna commit mass murder. There's actually a lot of odd things. Like for one, having 10 rifles. Like if I were to commit a mass uh, shooting or whatever, instead of having 10 rifles, I'd probably have one or two and really stock up on just that one round. So him having 10, it's like, even, and if you're working alone, that's a really, really weird thing, in my opinion. Not only that, but so it is, it almost sounds like someone placed it on him. Like, not trying mm -hmm. to start any conspiracy theories or anything like that, but it just sounds like, like, and the assailant had 12 knives on him. It's like, well, you only really need one. Yeah. So it's kind of weird. Maybe he doesn't, he didn't practice fast reload, so then he has to just shoot and then pick up another one, pick up another one. Oh. Because, like, not everyone can reload fast. Yeah, so they are reporting that uh, authorities believe that he had a device similar to a hammer to smash the hotel windows in order for him not to have access oh, shit. to the outside. And so they're saying that maids did go into his room before and that they didn't notice anything strange. He had previously purchased guns legally, but those were found in his home. None of the guns that he purchased legally were, were found. So they're all illegal oh. weapons that were in his Hotel. To my knowledge, I don't know that yet. They're just saying that none of his legally purchased guns were oh, part oh. of the ten. Mm. I see. Yeah. Apparently, he had a pilot's license too. It was not up to date. The ATF is running urgent traces on the guns that were found in the hotel room. They're reporting that he was a retired accountant. He also made money from renting and managing apartment buildings that he owned in Texas, Nevada, and Florida. Oh, this guy's really well put together then. On paper, yeah. On paper, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, I was reading about how he he was like a small business owner or something, and his brother was just like, yeah, he he really liked gambling, so he decided to move near there, and then he moved he from Florida to Nevada a year yeah. ago. Yeah, and I think he owns like a small airplane or something, or like he has a pilot's license. Yeah, or like he's and then he takes trips to Alaska to go hunting. So he's not your average like you know, middle class guy, it sounds like his quality of life is a little bit above ours. Yeah. Yeah. No children. He divorced 27 years ago. He had a girlfriend living with him named Mary Lou, 62 years old. So she initially was one of the suspects that cops were believing that was involved in this, but she was in the Philippines during this whole shooting. So they don't believe that she's a suspect anymore. The neighbors and local police, they said that they were <laughs> They would never draw attention to themselves, but... <laughs> it just sounded funny because it was like, like, who do we blame this on? The wife! 
uh, she's in the Philippines. Oh, right, never mind. <laughs> just like, like they were just trying to jump to like the next scapegoat immediately without even considering. Where were you yesterday? The Philippines. Okay, so then yeah, couldn't have happened. No, no, no. So his brother Eric was interviewed. He said that their family is shocked and horrified that they would never expect this from him, that he had plenty of money. He recently spoke to him, to his brother, about their mother who lost power during Hurricane Irma in Florida, that no one had seen him display any strong religious or political beliefs. So we really don't know what the motive was at all. Their father was a well-known bank robber and was on FBI's most wanted list from 1969 to 1977. He was diagnosed as a psychopath and he died a few years ago. So that's some family history. That's crazy. Wow. I'm really trying to paint him as like, he's good, but he's crazy. Yeah, they, I think they're leading with the psychopath part, huh? Yeah. The University Medical Center, UMC of Southern Nevada, took in way more patients than they had ever seen at one point. They had eight operating rooms operating at the time, and the entire night they had to do damage control as like patients poured in. And they now have a really long line of people at the hospital trying to donate blood because that's the number one thing that they're saying they need the most right that's now. That's so nice. You guys are in near the area, please go and donate blood. The White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders responded. I will show you what she said in this video I'm about to show you, which the video includes a compilation of uh, iPhone footage from people that were there. So just warning, it could be distressing. So. I'm already getting anxiety. I watched that shit all morning. Here we go. That is crazy. Sounds like war. Damn. Is he saying, where is that fucker? Yeah. yeah. Everyone's on Oh, Magali Bass is right there. Oh my gosh. Hey, you're okay, let's go. We can't, we can't we can't go yet. So we can't go yet. Oh my god. Are people falling because they got hit or they just slip and like... I think everyone's ducking. Yeah. They know that like a, just a firework, something that you think normally happens in Vegas. And then it just started going pop, 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 pop. Boom, 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 boom. Oh no. Shit. And they kept going, even, even after we left, it just kept going and going. It was, it was insane. One man, 29-year-old Sonny Melton, had traveled from Tennessee to Las Vegas for the concert with his wife, Heather. When the bullets began raining down from above, Sonny shielded her from danger, selflessly giving up his life to save hers. They'd been married for just over a year. Others risked their own lives to save people that they had never met. Mike McGarry of Philadelphia laid on top of students at the concert to protect them from the gunfire. They're 23, 20, I'm 53, he said, and I've lived a good life. Damn. Nancy Padgett and her fiance, Mike J, fled for cover during the attack and immediately returned to the scene with their pickup truck to help transport the wounded to nearby hospitals. Gail Davis, who was attending the concert with her husband, said she owes her life to a brave police officer who instinctively served as a human shield, protecting her from harm. Sadly, multiple police officers, both on duty and off duty, were among those killed or injured. But what these people did for each other says far more about who we are as Americans than the cowardly acts of a killer ever could. And then she goes on to... That's like a so tragedy, up. man. Speaking some more, she really chokes up. Wow. Crazy. And they don't know what the motive is yet or anything, huh? Um, so here's a map of where it was. So he was in the Mandalay Bay, here was the festival. Another fucking unfinished story? Damn, dude, well, like... It just happened. Like, we we might... Get more yeah, updates. Kill. But if he's gonna, I mean, if, he, if he's gonna kill himself, he should at least write a letter and leave it in the room or like something. Like, it's so like... Maybe there is one, but they're not releasing it yet. No, they would have said it. So this is the shooter. Or was the shooter. That's the best photo they could find? Yeah, this is the photo that's circulating everywhere. That's interesting. Oh, he broke a window right there? Two. Yeah, two of them. Two windows. Damn, did he have so a suite? He... Yeah, like a corner suite. Apparently, that's what it was. I mean, he's balling. So it could have two vantage points? Yeah. Were there two shooters? Why did he break two? I don't know. There's 
Maybe we might find out that yeah. there was another shooter. We don't know. Man, it's so odd because it's not, it doesn't seem racially motivated because it's white people attacking white people. That was the instinctual thing in me saying, oh, like when I first heard of like, oh, gunman. Uh, Las Vegas country. in country music yeah. festival. I was like, oh, this is racially charged. Yeah. But then when I found out the gunman was white, I was like, okay, yeah. this is this is like a dead end kind of thing. Yeah, and I mean, like, what does he gain from it? You know, like, if he's a gambler and you're pissed at the hotel because you lost a lot of shit or whatever, right? Like, I mean, if that was me, I would go at the hotel, the employees or whatever. It, not not just a random concert that has nothing to do with the hotel that you're staying in. But then it would have to be premeditated, right? If he got all those guns and he brought them into his hotel room? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. He, he thought this out. Yeah. Because he, the concert was like a weekend event. Yeah, it was a so, three day event. Yeah. He targeted the week, uh, the festival. Mm -hmm. Trump, or President Trump, he tweeted, My warmest condolences and sympathies to the victims and families of the terrible Las Vegas shooting. God bless you all. And he also, uh, he did a statement on TV as well. His statement was ridiculous. It was kind of comical. Like, it, like, what happened is really sad, but I can't take that full serious. Like, Why? Huh? No, just his speech pattern. Oh. Like, because, I don't know, no, you could say the most serious things, but because it's Trump saying it, it's like difficult to take it serious. Yeah, but this is insane though. There was like an estimated 22,000 people at this concert and it took police about an hour to locate where the shooter was coming from. Ay, 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 ay. Yeah, he, I mean, in terms of mass shootings, he really did it right because he picked a, a venue, he picked a time when there was a lot of people concentrated in one area where there was no, you know, actual exit to this yeah. area because it's, it's just people trampling over people, you know, once they figure out like what's happening. And then he has a really high vantage point. And he also got guns that, uh, he didn't use the guns that he legally obtained. He used, I guess, what they're reporting now as, the, as illegally obtained weapons. And it's really hard to even get automatic weapons to begin with. So I don't even know how he got them, but he yeah. had really automatic weapons, which is. You need like a high level license for that. Like I, even though Las Vegas is a state where you can own uh, fully auto legally, you have you have to have like a like a you have to own a you know gun shop or whatever like you have to have certain levels even if you own it I think it's still very very difficult so you he he either had to steal it or whatever because you it's not easy to have that and to move it into the hotel room like that too yeah I mean he could have put it into pieces and like put it but it's it's I think a lot of people that don't understand um, how the gun laws work what he already has in his possession is illegal that 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 shouldn't exist technically and i don't know how he got it because what he has you know not normal people just can't go into the gun store and buy that yeah like as soon as this happened a lot of people were just starting to just be like anti-gun this anti-gun gun that but the house the white house press secretary sarah sanders the woman you guys just saw in the video she said today is not the time to discuss about gun control policy today is for consoling the survivors and it's a time to unite that's what hillary did though she was like not to get political or anything but now is the time to stand up to the nra mm. Mm. so pretty much says not the time to get political but let's get political right now i don't know i feel like i see both sides where it's like yeah you gotta use people's um you know uh shock and and people realizing the crazy of what you know guns can do to jump on it but also it's people that don't understand anything about gun laws that pretty just you know like it, they're not making informed decisions like what that killer used is already illegal like completely illegal normal people I feel like instead of talking it. about guns it should be more about mental health and like how can we, I agree how can we like have you know access like everyone have access to you know usual checkups and regular checkups and to just really take care of their minds and yeah because the way i see like mental health is like is like um like you get a cold you know if you if you get some anxiety or whatever like it's it should be treated like it's fine everyone gets it everyone gets depression from time to time mm -hmm. but the way it's stigma it's so stigmatized that like if you get it people start looking at you as like oh 
you can't handle yourself. You're not positive yeah. enough. You're sick. Yeah. Go away. Yeah. I don't want to be around negative people or like you know all those things. I think it's it's very it's it's really bad in our culture. We don't really help that. That's probably why his brother in his interview was like, he never showed any signs. Yeah. He's probably suppressing the fuck out of himself. Yeah. So he keeps up like looking positive and cool. Who knows, you know? Well, and wasn't there like, a, I was reading reports saying that there was a, a lady, like 45 minutes to the incident happening. Yeah, there was a apparently lady there screaming was a woman at the crowds. that she made her way to the to the front row and started telling everyone, you are, you're all going to fucking die 45 minutes before. Yeah, it was like a... She had to be escorted. Girl saying that, right? Like... Yeah, well they're saying a lady, I don't know. A lady pushed her way through. Man, so crazy, dude. This stuff's so scary. Like when I first heard it uh, this morning, my immediate instinct was to start carrying a rifle too, just in case shit happens. <laughs> you just have it, it's like on you all day long. Yeah, because you just want to survive, you know? You're like, yeah. yeah, it's like a misdemeanor or a felony or whatever, but you're better to be alive than than you know, like the worst that could happen. But at that point though, you can't even shoot back. You, you can't, yeah, from. you can't. Yeah, if you yeah. see that hole, like I wouldn't want to shoot at the hotel because I might Shoot. Hurt someone in yeah. a yeah. yeah. True. And it was really dark too, so you, it was even harder to see. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's no way you would have seen in there. It's, yeah. a, it's a hard thing to combat because, yeah, there's there's the there's the side of uh, we need to all get arms and we need to protect ourselves. But like, how do you how do you protect yourself when you're in that moment? You know, you you don't even have time to assess the situation. You're gonna start. You know, it's like it's not well, that's not realistic. I think we're also looking at it from from someone that's on the ground floor, you know. But what if you're like the shooter's in the neighbor in the like in the that hotel? Oh, like you hear a bam bam. Oh yeah. shit, I'm hearing some shit. Call nine one one. But like you could kick the door down and like stop yeah, immediately. Stop put it, your weapon man. down, yeah. and then you don't fire a shot. But at least you're able to stop them. Get on the floor. You call nine one one. That's true. Some, you know what I mean? Like, you have more options, I feel like. Well, rest in peace. Yeah. All the victims. Thanks for watching, guys, and those are our thoughts. What are your thoughts? Don't forget to comment below. We want to know what you guys are thinking, but don't write anything that will make us sad or make us mad because, after all, we're just kidding news and we're a very happy channel. For the last video, click up here.